Hi, I'm Anna May Deal, the Chief of Gastroenterology at Duke University Medical Center, and I'm a professor of medicine who's been doing research in liver regeneration and repair for a number of years. Well, I'm here because I, I wrote a review article for the Mayo Clinic Proceeding, and the title of that was Liver Renewal, Detecting Misrepair and Optimizing Regeneration. And in order to write that article, I had an opportunity to review recent literature and also to reflect on some of my own work in this area. Uh, the world is really changing when it comes to the old dogma about liver regeneration. Ever since the Greek mythology, people have known that the liver has extraordinary regenerative capacities. And this is kind of the basis for the myth of Prometheus, where he was chained to a rock and every day a bird of prey would come and eat out his liver and then it would regenerate overnight. So he was doomed to, doomed to um, eternal torture. So we know that the liver can regenerate and for a very, very long time, we thought this was because there was something very extraordinary about the mature liver cells called hepatocytes. And I think that's true, but now we recognize that regeneration of the liver, just like any other tissue, is a very complex process. And it happens every time we injure our liver and kill cells. This would occur when the liver is damaged by toxins like alcohol or viral infection or autoimmune disease or, or anything really that damages the liver. And now we realize is that repair process is a lot more than just the replication or proliferation of the cells that survive, but rather cells are involved in orchestrating a wound healing response and this involves every cell in the tissue not just the hepatocytes so some of the most exciting research over the last little bit has been in defining the new mechanisms that regulate how all of these cells interact with each other so that they can reconstruct a healthy adult tissue this is pretty exciting from a clinical perspective because it opens up new things that we might think about as being biomarkers of liver disease or that would help us distinguish which people are repairing normally and which people are not. And so this is important because it helps us better stratify people into different treatment categories and also might even suggest some novel therapies. One of the things that my lab has been most interested in is uh, the, a cell called the stellate cell. The cell has gotten a bad name in the liver because it's known to produce a lot of the scar tissue and scarring generally is what's blamed for causing cirrhosis of the liver. And we all know that people can die from cirrhosis and require liver transplantation, et cetera. But work from our group and, and various other labs have now shown that these stellate cells aren't all bad, that they're very important for the wound healing response. And there's even some evidence to suggest that some of these stellate cells might themselves turn into hepatocytes and bile duct cells to help regenerate the liver. Very interestingly, it looks like some of these processes are regulated by the same sorts of signals that actually build the liver during fetal development. So this is all very exciting because drugs for some of those pathways are being explored as cancer therapy agents, and therefore these drugs might be now applied to patients who have liver disease. So all in all, I think this is a very exciting time, opens up new areas, and it's fun to be around in a time when we have new therapies to offer to patients. So I think um, the literature that I reviewed includes work from our group, but also from many other groups that are emphasizing new cell types that are involved in repair and reconstruction of damaged organs in adults. So these pathways include things like developmental morphogens. Our group has been looking at a pathway called hedgehog, but other people have studied other signaling pathways like WINT or NOTCH and people who study developmental biology recognize these names, but they're a little foreign to those of us who have been working in adults because traditionally we've thought about these pathways as regulating development or cancer. And now it appears that they also play important roles in regulating normal repair. Um, other things that uh, have sort of swum to the top in the more recent work on liver regeneration has been an emphasis on liver progenitors. I guess that's really not so surprising because what I just said was that these developmental pathways that are on in fetal life are being reactivated to repair the healthy adult liver, so it's not so surprising that progenitors are involved. And I think in development we know that organs are built because there's crosstalk between cells in the stroma and these progenitor cells, and lo and behold, it looks like the same thing is also true in the adult when liver repair is necessitated by various kinds of liver injury. So I think we're gonna see some overlap and redundancy between building a liver in utero 
and rebuilding the liver when it gets damaged in adulthood. Uh, so I'd like to thank the, the people at the Mayo Clinic for inviting me to participate in this review series. I think it's going to be a very exciting summary of new information that will help update clinicians about progress that's pertinent to their field. And I'd also like to thank all the people in the lab who did all the work that I summarized in that review article uh, from at least our group's perspective. Thanks. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.